Good morning, everyone. What I've got here is a PinePhone Community Edition. Right now, Pine64 is selling the Beta Edition, so this older thing, I guess, is an alpha. And what we have installed on here, in spite of the fact that this was the post-market OS Community Edition, what we have on here is Manjaro Arm with Plasma Mobile. And we're gonna be looking at Plasma Mobile because that's one of the two main uh, desktop environments or user interfaces that's available on these Linux phone uh, operating systems, with the big alternative being Fosh, which is what Purism developed for the Librem 5 and has become pretty popular on the um, Pine phone. So today what we're gonna look at is what's on here by default, what works, we're gonna try out convergence, and hopefully that's gonna be interesting. You can see that we have the KDE logo here as we boot up the phone. So there is our initial screen. We can see that we get a clock and a date. And then I swipe up like a plausible mobile device. And I'll go ahead and enter my pin, 1111. Press the enter button and we get our like desktop after booting up. You can see I'm having some issues with updating packages through the graphical discover tool. Through the command line, I'm not seeing the same sort of issues, but whatever. All right, so here is our phone at the desktop. By default, it's given us two icons here. We have a phone icon and a phone book icon. So the phone book is going to contain contacts and the phone icon lets us make and receive phone calls conceptually. Other apps that we have installed include Angelfish, which is a browser, AudioTube, which is a scheme to get music from YouTube. Uh, let's see what this thing is. This is a good feature that this version of Plasma Mobile has that previous versions that I've played with don't have. Specifically, it displayed that full screen loading animation. So it looks like this is a notes tool. In comparison, older versions of Plasma Mobile don't have a full screen loading animation. All right, so we've got some buttons here on the bottom. This button allows us to switch to different windows, which isn't terribly exciting when we only have one thing open. Uh, the X button will close the current app. And yeah, we can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and see if on second load that does any better. So this is the Notes app. We hit it, it shows the full screen loading icon, which tells us that it's actually doing something. It was still pretty slow. And then if we press the center thing, that's the home button, which will bring us back to the desk. All right, here is our desktop, and we have three buttons at the bottom. We have our application list menu, we have our home button, and we have our close button. If I go ahead and swipe up at this arrow, that will give us our application list. You can go ahead and open an app like Calculator. We get our full screen loading indicator. Loading Calculator was kind of slow, but it did eventually work. Now we can press the home button, swipe up again from the middle, go ahead and open up our clock app. Clock app also doesn't load instantaneously, but once it loads, we can see that we are in the American New York time zone and it's 2.30 p.m. And now we can press our application list here to see all of the applications that we're running we have our notes app, we have our calculator, and we have our clock. We can go ahead and switch over to an app as expected. Switching is very fast with a little animation, so that's kind of nice. We can go ahead and close an app by pressing that button. That brings us back to our desktop, and now our application list only shows two apps. Let's see what else we have. We have a video player. I bet that's a podcast app. Discover is our package manager tool. We have support for KDE Connect. That could be pretty nice for syncing this with a desktop. And I, I bet KDE Connect SMS would allow us to sync this to another phone for SMS messages. Keysmith, my guess is that this is gonna manage stuff like PGP keys. Let's take a look. Okay, this isn't a uh, PGP sort of thing, this looks like a one-time password thing. So this will do two-factor authentication. That's useful. All 
uh, photos, something. Megapixels, I think, is the camera app. And let's see if we can get any camera result. Oh, the camera is working. That's very nice. So let's go ahead and take a picture. I bet if I press that folder icon, we'll get our list of pictures. No. All right. Uh, let's find the gallery app and find that fancy picture we just took. Is that a gallery app? This isn't being super useful. Oh, here's a pictures thing. All right, so it looks like pressing that button did pop up a file manager in the background. And now if I go ahead and poke that picture, I'm not seeing anything. Open with. Uh... Coco is an image gallery application. Let's try that. All right, so with one app open, if I open another app, I don't get a loading screen. Oh. But it does successfully display the app. Let's see if we can close this out. Open up here, Coco should be under K. Right here is our gallery app. And there's the picture that we took. Now there should be a front camera on this. Let's see if we can figure out how to make the front camera work. So I open up megapixels. Does that flip button do it? The flip button works. So there's me and the camera I'm filming on. Can I take a picture with that? I can. It's awfully yellow. I don't know that I'm really that yellow, but this is working better than the camera on the Librem 5 worked the last time I tested it. So that was Megapixels. NeoChat is a matrix client for um, messaging. Don't know what Nota is. Let's open that up and take a look. It's a text editor. Ocular is a viewer for stuff, including PDFs. Phone, phone book, that makes sense. P sensor, I wonder if that's gonna give us some access to the phone sensors. Looks like we have some temperature sensors. Amazing, that's not that exciting. Uh, doesn't seem to be overheating though. Recorder probably records audio. Let's give that a quick go. Hi, we are recording audio with the recording thing on KDE Plasma. All right, it totally said we recorded something and then it lost it. Let's see if we can find that in the file manager. Just index the file manager. Home, net, uh, music. Open with uh, our media player. Hey, we are recording audio with the recording thing on KDE Plasma. I don't know if that's the highest quality audio I've ever heard, but it did seem to work. Settings, I'll take a look at that in a second. Spacebar is the SMS app. Telegram is another messaging app, largely janky and proprietary. Terminal is a terminal. Let's see what Wave is. It's another slow loading application. This is some sort of music playing and looks like built-in management tool. So this handles a music library. Last thing we have here is weather. Welcome to K-Weather, 
finish, add current location. All right, we are not actually connected to Wi-Fi. So let me go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi so it has some chance of doing something. Oh, it turned black. All right, my Wi-Fi is goat goat. There we go, password is, yeah, the, uh, the pop-up windows are not super effective with the thing. Let me clear out some apps here. It's not super happy with doing this animation to rotate these. I'm just trying to do Wi-Fi, so. That's gonna be in the settings app. Connect to GoatGoat, Goat. okay. We are now connected. Now let's go back to that weather app and see if we can. Figure out what's happening. I think that's a menu button, but it's not doing anything. Oh, locations. Add a location. Search for a place. Uh, let's go with the capital of my state, Concord. New Hampshire. Right there. Weather is 20 degrees, that must be uh, Celsius, partially sunny, that seems about right. Are there settings to set this to be freedom units? Yep. So there is the weather app. It's not what I want, I wanna go home. All right, so those are all the apps pre-installed on this phone. I tried plugging in a Verizon SIM to see how this thing does as a cell phone, and the results weren't great. The first thing I tried was mobile data, and that didn't work at all. That sort of surprised me, because the previous test I had done with a Linux phone showed that only mobile data worked, but I guess the results that we're gonna get are going to vary by modem, modem firmware, operating system, and potentially desktop environment. I tried doing a voice call and I got mixed results on that. First thing, it only successfully connected on an outgoing call. Trying to receive an incoming call didn't work at all. And even with the outgoing call, the audio was completely corrupt. So you couldn't actually use this for a phone call unless all you needed to be able to signal was the attempt to make a call. SMS text was a little bit better. Again, we only supported an outgoing SMS text message, but the SMS text message worked fine. When I did the incoming phone call and incoming text message, text message test, the phone just didn't do anything. It didn't, uh, didn't give a notification or other indication that something had happened. The next thing that I wanna try out is convergence, which I haven't tested before, either with the Pine phone or with the Plasma Mobile uh, desktop environment for a Linux phone. So what I have here is the Pine phone. The Pine phone is hooked up by USB over to this convergence docking thing, which came with the Pine phone convergence setup. This has four things connected to it. Power, we have keyboard and mouse, and then we have an HDMI cable. The keyboard and mouse are right here. And that HDMI cable goes over to this HDMI capture device. The HDMI capture device passes through to the monitor here, which you can see has the um, Plasma Mobile desktop running on it. But the capture device also has this USB cable, which comes over here into my laptop, which has OBS running on it, which I'll be able to use for desktop capture. Here is the Plasma Mobile desktop in convergence mode. It looks basically the same as it looked in phone mode, just the icons are a little bit smaller and now we're definitely in landscape mode. So in order to get our app list, we can go ahead and click this button and we get a list of the apps installed in the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by opening up the web browser and see how that works. 
We still get this full screen loading thing. And one thing that you'll note here is that we don't have any of the control buttons that we had at the bottom of the screen before. So the web browser loaded up nicely, but it's completely full screen. There are no uh, title bar buttons. There's no X in the corner that we can use to close this. And there are no uh, sort of phone buttons at the bottom. So we don't have a close button there either. But we can go ahead and visit a website. Uh, xkcd.com is a fun one. And that loaded fine. Let's go ahead and try something a little bit more difficult. Let's look at, oh, control L didn't give me the thing. So I'll click here, uh, slither.io. This is a website that I had tested out on the Librem 5. And it looks like what's going on here is that it's loading at best very slowly on the Pine phone in this uh, Angelfish browser, which is okay. I don't know if the Angelfish browser supports WebGL or anything like that at all. Next up, what if we want to quit out of this? Well, the first thing that I'm going to try is pressing Alt Tab and that didn't do anything. Oh, it might have. If I hold down Alt and press Tab, we get the, uh, the application list. So maybe there's some sort of, oh, there's the Slither.io nickname thing. Let's, uh, that did actually work. Let's go ahead and type in a name and then click play and see if we get anything at all. So that kind of worked. The controls weren't great. The graphics were kind of laggy. I'm not motivated enough to actually download uh, Chromium or something to try this out more, but it did eventually load. It was just a little bit slow. The only way I've found to quit out of apps is to press Control Q. And if I do that, it does in fact quit out of the app. Aside from that, let's go ahead and open Coco and see what the uh, photos look like. This is still slow. So here is the photo that I took earlier. And again, we're down to effectively no controls. We can switch between different photos that we took, but all we have is this menu thing. Aside from that, I don't even think I can, oh, there is a back button here that I can use. But it looks like there's supposed to be a hot corner here. I clicked in the hot corner and it appears to have frozen. Was that screen lock? That may have been screen lock. Let's see if I womp on things. Yep, that was screen lock. So if I drag this up, you can unlock it. And that uh, is still slow. I would like a desktop. There we go. Full screen terminal window loads up. And I mean, we have a working command line interface here. So that's fun too. I think that's all I really wanna look at as far as this convergence setup. It seems to basically work, but the, the user interface isn't completely like built out to deal with it properly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the settings thing while we're here in convergence mode and it's a little bit easier to see everything that's going on. We have online accounts with support for OwnCloud, NextCloud, and Google. OwnCloud and NextCloud are potentially good. I don't necessarily recommend setting up your uh, Linux phone to hook up to your Google account. We have the normal audio setup this looks like just pulse audio audio control through the KDE desktop. It's claiming that we have Bluetooth support. I haven't tested that out yet. The cellular network thing will give information about a SIM card that's installed. I couldn't get the access points thing to do anything. We have KDE color schemes. Those look normal. We have displays. And right now apparently our setup is 
the monitor that I'm using and the phone screen is right over here. Let me go ahead and, uh, you can't see this, but I can see that if I bring the mouse pointer off the side here, it is showing up on the phone screen. User interface fonts, Wi-Fi. Oh, there's support for a Wi-Fi hotspot, at least in the user interface. If I could get mobile networking to work, that would be fun to try out. Icon theme, software versions, languages, night colors, lock screen pin. That is something that I wanted to complain about. We have the same problem here that we had with the Fosh desktop environment where there is a numeric pin that's used to unlock the screen. And the implementation of that is that that is your user password for Linux. So you can't set a real password which means that if you enable password logins via SSH or otherwise, it is horribly insecure. So pins for unlocking the screen on a mobile device should be a separate concept from user passwords on a Linux system. We've got some style stuff here. We have uh, screen lock timeouts. Um, I haven't been able to get screen locking to completely get disabled. I would like it to be completely disabled because it's obnoxious for testing. But again, just like Fosh, properly managing screen locking isn't entirely working with the Plasma Mobile setup. The virtual keyboard on this seems okay, but it's not great. I think the one on Fosh is a little bit better. And um, we've been doing the network connection here on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi seems to work fine. All right, so that was the settings and a little bit of notes on this. So that is the convergence experience with Plasma Mobile on my Pine phone using Manjaro Arm. Mostly the stuff seems to work. With a little bit more polish, this would be a nice experience. I think it's a little bit behind Fosh, but Fosh isn't all the way there either. Overall, I don't think that Plasma Mobile is quite suitable with convergence as a laptop replacement just yet. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and click on the link down in the description and follow my RSS feed. That way you won't miss anything I post in the future. Have a wonderful day.